What is up everybody, it's a great storm here doing a recording of using Linux GMS to build Rust dedicated servers. Rust was a big hype around December, January. It usually picks up almost every year around the holidays. Um, a lot of streamers were playing it, a lot of servers got built. It got built so much that actually the Rust game developers in Steam were having issues with the server listing. Um, they Pretty much what happened was you can have a server in Canada, you can have a server in Russia and still be able to see on the Rust list. But there was so many servers and so much workload that you couldn't see servers based off a certain distance. It was um, it was interesting. I had a ticket raised with uh, Rust many because my server went off the map regarding the list. And I was like, hey, why is it not showing up on the list? Is it broken? I thought it was, they implemented some type of region lock, but it turns out to be just a um, an issue regarding uh, location as well as I believe it was um, server query on Steam CMD. Um, so yeah, I just had to move my server a little bit closer to me in order to actually see it on the list. So currently we have a new instance on. Uh, I'm using right now AWS Amazon Linux which is a uh, a distro of Red Hat. So as close as to Red Hat would be CentOS. This is going to be incorrect. I just don't remember what the Amazon command is. So let's go ahead and install the Apple. Once that's installed, we're going to go ahead and do the prerequisites right here. You got to make sure you get that installed. If you don't get that installed, you're going to have a bad time. I mean, you don't have any prerequisites, the installation is going to crash and burn. You'll probably have to do a lot of cleanup, so make sure you get that installed. So we'll let that get installed real quick and uh, we'll continue from there. Alright, so that's installed. Let's go ahead and look at the, um, the installation package. So we're going to do add user Rust server. I can just do copy and paste, as you guys will probably be doing copy and paste. Um, you want to go ahead and do a, su a switch user to Rust server. We are now as a Rust server. Who am I? I am Rust server. I always thought it was funny. It's like, instead of Rust, I'm in Rust server. Uh, uh, I'm not here to judge. I like the name. It's great. All right, so let's go ahead and do a Linux GMS uh, .sh. I love me a, a wget. I love wgets. All right, so now we have the Rust server installation script already located on your home directory for your user Rust server. So let's go ahead and run the command. You're going to want to do install. And we'll let that go and install. It's going to ask a couple of inputs. I'll walk through the inputs. So uh, we'll just let that go through. When Rust starts installing, um, I'm going to have to step away. Just FYI. It's currently checking all the prerequisites, making sure the prerequisites are there before running the scripts. Because, of course, if you run a script, it's going to give exceptions. And exceptions scare people. Um, it does. It usually when I see an exception, I'm like, well, this, work, this app doesn't work. I'm walking out. That's typically how most people see it. And sometimes I always see it when I'm lazy. All right. So now it's installing Rust. So let's step away real quick. Um, we'll let that install. Once it's installed, we're going to go forward and um, uh, the configurations for the Rust server. So just FYI, you probably, probably see that warning right here. This is warning to fail to in an SDL thread. Don't worry about that. Ignore that. That's not an issue. It won't cause any issues in the installation. Um, it's just a warning. If it was an error, of course, I would, would recommend you concern and panic. <laughs> All right. Rust is installed. Um, yes, Rust has been installed. That's gave me the configurations. Configurations. Um, yes, some its stats. Alright, so that's the command that we need to run Rust, but before you do that, you want to go ahead and go to uh, LGMS, um, you want to go to Configurations, LGMS, Rust Server, and you want to go to Default first. Don't edit this file. You're going to want to put the information you found in the underscore default to rustserver.cfg. Um, that's going to be where you do all your configuration changes. Uh, let's see here. You don't need salt. I don't really care much about salt. You don't need tick rate. Um, you can do the configurations if you want to, but I really don't care. 
This server is currently using port 28083, not 2. Usually the default's 2, but for some reason, past me decided it would be a smart idea to use 3 instead of 2. Alright, let's go ahead and just put a random one. Test 1, 2, 3. We'll put a Rust YouTube Storm Test. It's a big long name. Thank you, thank you. I work hard on that. I love me a 55 seed and a 3300. It's just one of my favorite maps. Alright, let's go ahead and do a run start. Alright, so it is starting. We can go ahead and look at the process on top. We got a PID 6334 running at 1 core, 1.6 CPU core, I think, 101%, 16% memory. Um, yeah, it's running. I do give it, a, give it a second, depending on your server. If your server has some good CPU and good memory and good hard drive space, you're going to zip fly, the, you're going to zip through this. But this server isn't really built for game servers, so it does take a while for it to come up. So, um, I'm currently using a two, a um, two core processor. It's a virtual virtual CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM. I think that's what I'm using right now. Let me go ahead and check. Yeah, this is two core. And typically with Rust, you want to have at least four to eight gigs for a standard instance. Um, if you're doing like a bunch of mods, like a lot of mods, um, I recommend you bump up from um, 12 gigabytes. Typically, a big modded server can go up to 8 to 10 gigabytes of memory. Um, sometimes it doesn't go that high. It depends on what type of mod you install. Um, stock servers usually can go up to 4 gigabytes to 3.9. I recommend doing a 4.8 just for a small Rust server. Um, but of course, if you're installing mods, I do recommend looking into getting more memory. CPU-wise, you really don't need that much CPU. You can run you can run it with a two a two core. Um, recommended is four core, in my opinion, mainly because you want to make sure you don't get a bottleneck. But you really don't stress yourself out using a two core. Um, Space-wise, it really depends on what mods you install. Typically, I install my servers with 15 gigabytes of data. Um, I usually see a Rust server get get to 12 to 10 gigs of, gigabytes of data on the hard drive, so I really don't like worry about that as much. But the more mods you install, the more hard drive space you'll need. So always keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and. Click here and get the IP address of that instance. All right, so we got the IP address and we got the the port. So let's go ahead and say find game. You probably won't see it for a little bit. It's still loading. Um, it's pretty much a waiting game at this point. So let me go ahead and cut the video. Um, once the server is finally up and running, you'll see it on this list and I'll just demonstrate it to you. All right, guys, I am back, and it looks like we finally got the server back. We're, we, we didn't shut it down. Um, it's finally online. Rust usually takes a minute, depending on the CPU. Usually the CPU is the factor that causes Rust to take a while or be really quick on startup. So always keep in mind with that. Um, so it looks like we got it online. That is this instance, player 50. Looks like um, we're good. We got the Linux... Uh, GMS Rust dedicated server up and running. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Go ahead and look at anything else I work on. I'll be working on some more games, Linux game servers. Um, have a great night, guys.